Recently I came up with the idea to make a new series of videos which I will call Simple Tuning. And the idea behind uh, this series of videos will be to, in a simple way, explain what certain setup changes do on the car. And these will mainly be subjects which I haven't covered previously on my YouTube channel and subjects which I haven't covered on the X-Ray YouTube channel uh, either. So subjects as well which have been requested by uh, other racers or by friends or customers. So basically subjects which are of interest to, to you uh, viewers out there. So I figured today that we're going to start with Ackerman and Bump Steer because Ackerman and Bump Steer are two very powerful tuning options on modern touring cars. And they are also important and they're mainly quite quick and easy to do because you can adjust them with um, shimming. You can, you can just adjust the height of the shimming to make these changes. But today I will explain how I use these two changes and what they actually do to the car in a simple way. So uh, let's dive into it. Okay, so let's start with Ackerman. What is Ackerman? I thought the best way to explain how Ackerman works uh, would be to demonstrate it on a hoodie setup station mounted on the car. And Ackerman refers to the, the difference in steering angle between the inner wheel and the outer wheel in the corner. So pretend that you're going to a corner, in this case a left hand corner. Your inner wheel is going to have a steering angle of 25 degrees in this case as you can see about the outer wheel however which is on the outer side of the corner is only gonna have approximately 17 and a half degrees of steering angle and this difference between the inner wheel and the outer wheel is referred to as the Ackerman effect and it's often uh, confused among racers uh, when you're talking about more or less Ackerman when you're talking about a more Ackerman angle, you're actually uh, talking about a bigger difference between the inner wheel and the outer wheel. So, uh, having no Ackerman will be to have the wheels parallel in the corner. By the way, the cars are set up and the way the cars are designed to work, um, they have what we call an Ackerman angle. And this can easily be adjusted by shims on the steering rack in the middle. You have the option to add shims between the ball stud and the steering rack to move the point of the steering length forward or backwards. In this case I have no shims here between the, st the ball stud and the steering rack but to alter my Ackerman value we can change that. So as I've just said we had 25 degrees of lock on the inner wheel, 17 and a half on the outer wheel. Let's see what happens to these values when we add a one millimeter shim between the ball stud and the steering rack. Okay, now that's all done. We have one millimeter of shims here in between the ball stud and the steering rack. We now need to check the toe out. Previously I had one degree per side per wheel so um, let's see that it's still one degree. We might need to adjust it a little bit. No it's still fine, still one degree. Okay so let's now see how this affected the, the steering angles. Okay so let's go to Full lock here, 25 degrees. You, might, you may need to adjust your steering lock a little bit. In this case, we need to turn it up slightly here. I've done another video which talks about setting up your steering. Need to add a little bit here to reach 25 degrees for the EPA. Okay, so 25. And now on this side, we can see that it's actually instead of 17 and a half, like before, it's uh, at 18 degrees. So this means that we have a smaller difference between the inner wheel and the outer wheel, the bigger the shim we have on the steering rack. So this is 
a very uh, sensitive change. You can feel a big difference on the track in terms of handling. In general, I, I tend to recommend using none or uh, half a millimeter of shims as a starting point. Uh, for certain extreme conditions or um, where you need a lot more steering, a lot more front grip, you can try to use one millimeter or more. But I wouldn't use anything more than one millimeter for most conditions. Uh, keep in mind that the Ackerman angle is also affected by the wheelbase. So for example, if you use the wheelbase shimmed all the way to the back, that basically means that you've added one millimeter of uh, Ackerman shim, even though there's no shim there, if that makes sense. So if you push the arm backwards, that's going to affect the Ackerman angle. So keep that in mind whenever you make changes to the, to the wheelbase, when you move the arm forwards or backwards. So it's usually within the zero to one millimeter range for the Ackerman. Adding shims is going to make the car twitchier. It's going to make it harder to drive. It's going to be more direct, more nervous. It's going to be more prone to traction rolling. It will, however, maintain the tire temperature better. So it will not overheat the tires as much, which can be helpful for certain conditions. But in general, the drivability is better. And the less shims you have, the car is going to be more forgiving to drive. So I think that's Ackerman covered. I hope that's clear to you and let's move on to bump steer okay so let's talk about bump steer bump steer is fairly easy to comprehend what it means because uh, there's there's a good description in the name uh, bump steer is unwanted steering uh, when you go over a bump or when the suspension is compressed during cornering so basically it's uh, the wheels turning without input from the steering wheel so imagine that you're going through a corner the wheels are turning and you hit a bump or something and the suspension is uh, quickly compressed like this and when you have bump steer the steering wheel the the wheel is gonna want to turn uh, to the inside so basically it's gonna want to toe in on compression over the bump or in the corner just from cornering and this is um, a big tuning option. You can use this for tuning um, the handling of the car. But uh, adding bump steer, adding this effect will make the car more difficult to drive, but it can help to improve the steering of the car. So um, how do you adjust this? You adjust this by adding or removing shims here. So as you can see now, it's difficult to see on the, on the video, but I have a one millimeter shim here installed, which is a good basic setting for asphalt racing. Now, if I would add more shims here, for example, if I would add um, another one millimeter shim, so I would have a total of two millimeters, then I will have more bumps there. This means that when the suspension is compressing or when you're hitting a bump, uh, the wheel is gonna want to tow in more. So it's gonna make the car more difficult to drive. If you want to reduce this effect, if you want to reduce the bump steer, you will have to remove shims here. So reduce the shimming between the ball stud and the steering block. Um, for example, if you, re you reduce the shimming, when you go through the corner, the suspension is compressing or you're hitting a bump, um, the wheel angle will not change as much or it will not change at all depending on if you remove the bump steer completely or not but as you can imagine it, it will have a really big effect on the handling so usually the advice that i try to give is as a basic setting for carpet i try to use between none and one millimeter of shims uh, for that kind of surface and for asphalt you can use as little as that or as much as two millimeters of shims because on asphalt you can usually get away with um, a bit more bump steer without making the car too difficult to drive but on carpet usually it has to be less and that's why on carpet if you're struggling with a car that's uh, too nervous too direct um, has too much initial steering or is um, traction rolling for example you should try to reduce this shimming and on the other hand if you're racing on asphalt you're struggling for front grip, 
and steering, you can increase the shimming to add a bit of bump steer effect. But it's really uh, surface specific and track specific and in general, uh, I would recommend using less trims for modified racing and a bit more for uh, stock classes. Because obviously the, the speeds of modified cars, they tend to um, and be better suited with uh, less bump steer shims. So I hope that this video has been informative and that you understood the basics of uh, bump steer and how it affects the handlings. I hope that this can be useful for you in setting up your car and uh, fine tuning your setup. Enjoy!